Today's episode is brought to you by Organifi. Organifi is an organic superfood supplement line that makes quality, trusted nutrition convenient and accessible. Their most popular product, Green Juice, solves the problem of juicing greens on the go. Just add water, drink, and let your body soak up the benefits. Visit Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com, to learn more about an exciting offer for you, our podcast listeners. I wake up every single day, I am who I say I am, and I get what I get because I live in beast mode. Stop being gazelles, you're not average. You're not even good, you were born to be great. What's going on, world? Welcome to another edition of the Secret to Success podcast. I'm your host, CJ, joined as always by the Bayesian sensation, Mr. Carl Wesley Phillips. Hey, I'm just going to say it's 82 degrees. We can stop Ah. talking about the weather now. We ready to rock and roll. I know that's right. And and that that explains why Douglas is also currently in Lansing, Michigan. (laughs) Yeah, bro. It feels good out here, man. Uh, Welcome to the real world, fellas. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, glad to see that you all made it to uh, the, the the other side. All right, Spread. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm yeah, hoping. yeah, don't, yeah, don't put, don't, yeah, like, don't put no, put it in stone or nothing like that. I saw, I think next week, sometime in the morning at least, it's gonna be 39 degrees. Oh yeah, no, I, I ain't looked that far ahead. 60. Once I saw 82, oh, yeah, no. I, used to, I I'm like, I ain't looking no more. I'm done. No, I start, I start running again. So I'm like, oh, yeah, can yeah, I go yeah. outside and do it? <laughs> I was like, nope. I was on a treadmill this morning, like. Nope. I looked at the weather. It was like 50. I was like, nope, can't do it. Wait, you uh, which, you you started back running. I didn't know you stopped. Oh, man. did I, I told you I got sick, man, for like three weeks. I don't know what it was. They said it was a virus. It wasn't that deep. And I promise you, I do like a day on, two days off a day on. But my ET, 45 minutes to an hour, that Australian thing you saw, yeah, I ain't done that in about a month. Oh, remember Australia? We was hitting them two-a-days. Bruh, two-a-days, bruh. Yeah, this has nothing to do. I'm back to that again. I got to get back to the two a days for a month. So when I get to Jalen's camp, I can keep up with the kids. <laughs> um, Carl, how are you and your family taking advantage of this lovely weather? You oh, guys man, it's just weird, dude, because Michigan is like a whole different place. I can't explain it. Well, you know, but to our listeners, it's like a whole it's not the same place. So we could go like you ain't see nobody outside. And I'm talking nobody. about today, dude, that's traffic. It's like all kind of stuff going on. So no, we just outside <laughs> playing. Um, I got it's a I got lovely a, day. It's a lovely day. I got a little soccer in with Jordan the SAA. We just outside more. I'm talking about like for real, like just sitting down, sitting down outside, looking at, at like what could be sunshine and like we're not used Mike to. Mike was barbecuing. Mike was Mike barbecuing. Was barbecuing yeah, on it's, the first it's, day. I'm talking about we out here. Oh, did he have a turkey links? Oh no, he just did the chicken boy. He had the grilled chicken boy out there. Yeah, I know he gotta have something vegan on the menu he could throw on that grill. Oh yeah, he can. <laughs> he can. He asked at least. I'm like, I'm good. He asked yeah. at least. Why don't you catch us up on the vegan thing? We ain't heard much about it lately. How's that going? Man, let me tell you something, man. We found a spot called Yard House, and um, that's pretty much, man, every city we've gone to, that's what we've pretty much eaten, man. They've got a, uh, what do you call it? They've got a vegan option, if that's what you call it, gluten-free vegan options. So you know where they do like the, um, what do you call it? Like um, for, uh, the uh, soy chicken so they'll make it in Ugh. different ways. And then we had, man, Carl, we hit a... Uh, a Why are beh- they allowed to call it chicken, though? You know what I'm saying? Well, I'm saying they have to have a name for it. So <laughs> they're trying to do something that people... Yeah, Carl, why they always trying to... Hey, you know what I'm saying? They yeah, I'm just trying, trying to do like said, a black bean filet. Like, you know, <laughs> stay up off my meat term. Yeah, if they say, <laughs> if they say uh, Sally... A Sally Sushi, sis, that you wouldn't know what they was talking about. So when they say chicken, it's like, ooh, it's going to be close to that. I'm going to be real with you, though. My if girl gets like into that. Chicken, I don't really like it like that. You would love soy chicken. <laughs> no, that's Rubber. not the truth. No, that's not the truth. <laughs> but then we went to this um, Caribbean spot, Carl. I had never seen this in my life. But they had a dish that was like oxtail. And um, I didn't order it. Like I said, I don't really get down with the substitute meats that much. My wife you know, craves it, but she had it and was like, no, you need to taste this. And I promise you, Carl, I tasted that joint. And you know, let's just be real, bro. Meat is, meat in itself ain't good. Right. It's the seasonings. So it's the, it's the way you season it. So however they season that, whatever that oxtail, fake oxtail, it, it, I, now I was like, D, I'm good. I don't, I don't need it, but I had t- a spoonful and I was like, yo, this the, this the best, that was the best 
fake meat substitute <laughs> I've ever had in my life, bro. And but I'm, you know, Caribbeans don't, Carl. They don't have that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was weird. They they have either oxtail, jerk, or jerk. Goat, that's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And they they had the soy boy, and it was yeah, it was fire. So yeah, man. You know, it, I ain't gonna lie, man. It's been not tough in terms of. You know, I ain't been tempted to eat no meat or nothing like that, but it's been tough when you have to eat out anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like cooking it at home or when Leah made our food, but going out to eat every day for five straight months, being on the road, bro, it, it's not uh, yeah, it, it's not the easiest thing. So, so what I do, just, y'all, you, do y'all still have a private chef when you come home or she retired because y'all wasn't never there? Um, I hope that's not the truth, but she did shut the kitchen down to the middle of May. So mm. yeah, she's she's revamping some so what, stuff. So, so what what exactly are you like? What do y'all gonna eat for dinner tonight? So Didi has sautéed some broccoli. Um, what's this? Carrots. I'm looking at the refrigerator now. Carrots, zucchini, squash. So she just soaks it, puts it in the oven, and bakes it. And then I just usually give me some wild rice. She don't like to eat rice. I'm like, boo, if I ain't going to eat no beef or pork chops or chicken, I got to have. I'm sorry. I ain't no bread. You're still not doing bread, right? Mine. No, oh, man, you know I got to do bread oh, now. I was going to say, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm on the road. I mean, I, I, I didn't necessarily have to do it at Yard House, but, like, today when we came home, we went to um, our old stomping ground See, they, It's not called um, Philly. What was, you, what it was used to call back in the day? Philly. Best, um, steak steakhouse. Best Steakhouse. Well, that's oh, I what got it was you. called, Best yep. Steakhouse. Now I think it's Philly Steakhouse or something like that. Man, we, we used to be in there uh, murdering oh, That sucker so far. Uh, so, so, that, so that's what we end up getting. We end up getting, um, you know, that without the meat, but still like the all the saute onions, the green peppers, mushrooms, or whatever, and they put the, still the sauce in it, Carl. Did you just say you got the euro without the euro? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, euro without the euro. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that what, sucker was yeah, fired, though. Again, we need to that rename. Fired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, y'all I'm just hate how you though. get to call yourself. You know how you hate when entrepreneurs call themselves entrepreneurs yeah, and they really yeah, do yeah, nothing? Yeah. Yeah. That's how yeah. I feel about you naming your vegan yeah. dishes after me. Well, I'm just saying, when I call my man was like, what do you want? I got to tell him what I want. He don't have the, he don't have a name. So I got to so be like. So say that you would like the yeah. bread that comes with the Euro sandwich <laughs> within a veggie souffle and call it a veggie sou- souffle. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, if that's what he going to have to put on the menu. But I got to help my man out. So I'm like, I want the Euro without the Euro. You know oh, man. <laughs> let, man, I'm uh, sorry. I just had a moment when, when we said Euro thinking about the. Uh, the hard, original? Oh, man, I was going to say the hard, original. Man. Oh, my God. Yeah, I would never do that. I would never Ooh. disgrace that with, let me get that without that. I would never oh, do that. Yeah, yeah that, <laughs> I, I don't know if we mentioned it on the podcast That'll before. That'll change one your time life. We were doing a week of prayer, and it was down the street from a, a, a food cart, and they, my man had a Euro on there that was, oh, uh, we ate it like three times oh, a day I'm talking a couple of days. Yeah, the, every single day we went back to that joint. Oh, uh, my man threw the extra sauce on that day Ooh. right out the cart. Ah, it was the best sandwich I ever had in my life. So, all right, cool. Carl, what you eating these days? Just just, Uh, just savaging, huh? So, no, my parents here. So my parents here, I'm as close to ease ease routine as you can without being vegan because my parents are vegan and they're the ones doing the the heavy lifting in the kitchen. So they're throwing down mostly rice. It's any kind, I'm saying any any Caribbean house, you know it's going to be rice all day. Rice potato, the staples. Rice potato, yeah. all the veggies. You know what I'm saying? So pretty, pretty, pretty close. But once in a while, I stop over by Mike's house and see what he got going on. Yeah, you feel what I'm saying? You had to go to Mike's house. <laughs> yeah, once in a while, I just stop over by Mike and just make sure that yeah, his family are like, right. I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah, and we'll just, you know, happen to just have dinner together or something like that. But well, let me just say, I'm I'm still holding it down for all my carnivores, <laughs> and uh, we're doing Hello Fresh. We're doing chicken. Of course, we're eating healthy, but uh, yeah, it is uh, tough. And my pop's gone now, so we can get back to our regular routine. Cause mm. you know, uh, pops and, and and grandma here. Oh and, yeah, they they uh, letting it rip. Yeah, that throw off your routine uh-huh. just a little bit. You know, pops waking up doing pancakes, eggs, bacon every morning. I'm like, Lord course. have mercy. But you know so you what's gotta... so crazy to me? What's so crazy to me, man? I look at my grandma, and I'm just like, yo, like that. She's still smashing. And I'm like, okay, well, you born at a certain time, you can smash, and it don't right. really have no effects on you. Oh, you know no what I'm saying? It's a, di- it's your a body different evolved. Uh, digestive system. Yeah, her body evolved to adapt to that right there. She good. Bro, I'm just tripping like, you know, like, yo, you eating any and everything. Going and you, strong. 
And you were hitting the, the, the Budweiser boy, the Michelob, oh, no doubt. the Michelob boy, and ain't looking well, still looking good. Well, that's just to balance good. it all out right there. The Budweiser Bruh. balance it all out. I'm just amazed. Like, I can't look at a... I can't look at a Guido and not, <laughs> and not get, you know, get pick up some weight on that joint. It's unbelievable, oh, bro. Oh man, no, it, it, that is that is the truth, though, man. You have one cheat meal. I wake up in the morning like, whoa! I'm talking about bloated. I'm talking about, I'm talking about bacon and eggs. See every, I'm like, unbelievable. Yeah, I'm, no, I wish uh, I could eat that, bro. Oh, I wish I could have bacon, eggs, <laughs> grits, and potatoes every, every, morning. every morning with a pan, with a pancake. All, all, all on a sandwich. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I wrap it up in a pancake. <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> hey, that's the thing. When you do come off that vegan boy, you just turn into I'm Savage. talking about a T-Rex. <laughs> you just smash anything in sight. <laughs> It'd be so good on that one cheat day. You done blew the whole year worth of vegan out in one setting. I'm talking about, oh, I'd sit down eating raw meat if I was you. I mean, yeah. I just raw. wasn't even cooking. Just bleeding and everything. Yeah, um, yeah no, we, we getting back to normal over here. The folks are gone. Um, yeah, they were, they were here for a while, so that was good because me and my wife just literally don't have to do anything while they're here, so... I'm back to having to be a dad, uh -huh. so that's weird. Um, Trey is looking to me to make his meals uh, and all of that good stuff. So it, it, he actually said he, he was told me, sat me down the other day. He said, uh, "Dad, I need to tell you something." I was like, "What?" He's like, "I'm moving to Michigan," and I was like, <laughs> "Really?" He said, "I said, uh, well, what about your your mom and dad? We live in Atlanta." And he looked dead at me and said, "Papa and Grandma are my new mom and dad." <laughs> I was like. <laughs> All right. Well, that settles it then. <laughs> My man loves Michigan. I'm wow. like, it's cold there. He like, I don't care. I want to go to Michigan. So um, we'll we'll see. We we shall get him back to hang out with the. Uh, oh yeah, tell Trey, come on up. Soon. Tell him come on um, up. All right. I didn't want to do it, but I and I've been dodging it long enough. All right. I've been dodging it. I said no. I'm not going to talk about it. Because I don't want, but since I get all the negative feedback anyway, I'm just do what I want to do. Right? <laughs> um, this is a topic that's been unavoidable on several of my group texts. You know, you got threads, like you got certain threads with certain people and certain threads with other people. One person in a thread, one person's not in a thread, and some overlap here and there. But um, I, I, the debate has raged on long enough without us mentioning it on the podcast, but um, I'm just going to say it, and it's going to cut a little deep. LeBron James is the greatest basketball <laughs> player Here we go. to ever live. Now, I, I say this with the utmost certainty, and anybody who watched the last series, you watched a man literally dominate by himself an entire team and carry them to victory in a game seven. We talking now, the Pacers? Yes, the Pacers. Oh, oh okay. The same Pacers that, <laughs> now, let, let, let's, we'll, we'll get there later, we'll get there later. Uh, I'm just asking, you, I just want to make okay, sure you're yes, talking about the, the same yes, team, I'm yes. talking about the Pacers, yes. who got rid of George Paul, the number one player. Well, Paul and, George, his cousin. <laughs> <laughs> and then they got the whoever the other dude is, so the Pacers, okay, he took the Pacers on by himself. They did take the Pacers on by himself. Okay, All right. But here's why I say this. Ian, try to, just try to hear me out. I'm not trying to blast nobody, and Michael Jordan is the second greatest ba basketball player that ever lived. I will give him that. But when you look at what the man has done with what he's had to work with, it is now impossible to say that LeBron James is not the greatest basketball player to ever live. Now... I back that up by saying, because I, I know what he's going to say. He lost in the finals oh, five I'm times. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> he only won three. I'm not But I just want to take a look, E, and I want to see if anything else factors in to whether he's the greatest basketball player of all times. Now, notice I didn't say he's the greatest winner of all times. Notice I said he didn't have many, as many championships. Oh, yeah. Well, if you got it, if you're going to categorize I'm, it like that, of course. Now, we can say he the greatest if you want to. He's the greatest yeah, basketball if, yeah, player you want ever. To and and, and yeah. people are trying to argue me on the group text, and what I'm trying to explain to them is you have to take into account. You made up a account. category. Yeah, yeah. If you, you made up no, a I'm category. No, I said he's the greatest basketball player. Uh, well, I'm saying, I mean, yeah. I'm okay. saying, hey, hey, let so me get the so research, because e, I know C got yeah, no, no, like no. documents no, over no, there. No, no, I just said no research. I was just thinking yesterday. I was thinking about my group text. So let me ask y'all this. 
okay, LeBron did lose in some finals, right? With the exception of maybe the Dallas final, every time he lost, he lost to a team with multiple Hall of Famers, sometimes even three, I think, with the Spurs, right? We Ginobili, Parker, Duncan. I mean, that's three Hall of Famers. So he lost to them maybe once or twice. You're talking about losing even in the Eastern Conference Finals when he lost to, you know, Paul Pierce, KG, Ray Allen, multiple Hall of Famers. So then I was trying to be objective as I could, and I went, I said, who did LeBron beat? Maybe he just beat some Titans. Maybe he just beat a bunch of people, because that's what everybody tells me. Oh, the East is so weak now. Back in the day, the East used to be. And so I was like, oh, okay, that sounds good, but, like, let me see who was on the East. So I went back, and his major rivals were the Pacers, who he just got done dogging out. Oh, you're talking Reggie Miller Pacers. That's a whole different Pacers. Okay, okay. So then I looked at Reggie Miller. Are you aware of the fact that Reggie Miller only made the All-Star game four times in his whole career and is a borderline, I guess he probably would make the Hall of Fame, but that's one. Now, do me a favor. Name the second best player that um, the Pacers had back then. Who was the second? Who was number two? Mark Jackson. My point, exactly. Mark Jackson, <laughs> Jalen Rose. Actually, Rick Smith. Okay? Now let's look at the Knicks. The, the 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 big bad Knicks. Patrick Ewing is a Hall of Famer. Who else did they have? Oh, they had a whole bunch of role players. I don't know. A whole I bunch mean, of I, role players. I was a that's what, so that's my problem with the players. argument. Now, yeah. you look at who LeBron had to go against. You take, like I said, the dynasty that was the Celtics, the dynasty that was the Spurs, and he's now lost two out of three. He beat them one time, but lost two out of three to the Warriors, who arguably have the greatest team of all time in the history of NBA basketball. You look at who Jordan got his chips against. I'm not saying, sorry, Josh, but Utah <laughs> was towards the end of their run uh-huh. with Stockton and Malone, right? And then you got, you know, uh, 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 the Supersonics. Okay, Sean Kemp, I'm pretty sure he's not in the Hall of Fame. The and Gary Payton, GP, was one yeah, of the but I'm goats. I'm saying that, that's lopsided because LeBron has to play a good team in the West when he gets to the finals, Michael Jordan had to play the greatest teams in the East. And, of course, by the but time he got to the But that's why I keep saying, e, who are the greatest teams you keep referring to? I'm saying he, he, he had to the go Pacers? against the Pistons. No, he had to you go against the Pistons. You just said the second best player was Mark Jackson. No, no, no. He had to go against the Pistons a few and times. Lost. Yep, he went against the Pistons. He well, went and against... don't forget, LeBron had to go against the Pistons when we were super nice, too, and he scored like 48 points to put us and out. Of our I, hey, I, I'm, hey, all I'm going to say, when people say, say LeBron, all I say, Carl, is... LeBron is a great student who doesn't test well. Michael Jordan is a great student, and he tests well. How can you say he doesn't test well when he's uh, the most, that, like, statistically, in all the uh, in elimination uh, a, games, he, he got no, the best numbers? He's great. He's great. He has the, he's a great student. He is the stat king. But when it's test time, he, he's not as strong as he is when it comes to um, that. And if he's as great as you say he is, he should have been able to play some of those other teams some of the great teams and 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 and, and win against some he of those teams. He did play so, some of the great teams and win against them. He beat the Celtics. He beat the Warriors. He beat the Spurs. I think he Dwayne, beat all I think of them. He didn't beat Wade, them every bro. time, but he beat no, no, all of them. But I, I think Dwayne Wade is going to go down as a pretty decent player. He played oh, with yeah, Dwayne absolutely. Wade. Yeah, yeah he yeah, played absolutely. with Bosh. Bosh was a first-rounder. Uh, Bosh is borderline Bosch first, all-star game. He definitely ain't saying, a he, Hall of Famer. I'm just saying, he was a first-rounder, and when, he, when they played together... He was at a high level. So I don't know because of his injury or his sickness, maybe he won't be a Hall of Famer, but he played with two two or three great uh, guys, and he had a couple other. Um, he had Ray Allen on his squad. He, he had some decent people playing with him. He didn't have all scrubs playing with him. He no, didn't. I'm not saying he had scrubs. I just think it's revisionist history when people go back and they like, oh, uh, the East was so tough back then. I'm like, I looked at the team. I'm like, okay, Patrick, you who, who was next? John Starks? I don't, I don't remember everybody, you know but I saying? do know this. The difference between the two, and again, if you want to say he did great, I'm cool with that. But if you want to say the most winningest, the cold-bloodedest, the dog, the, the gorilla, then it's Michael Jordan. So if you want to say stats... We can't argue that my man is racking no, up. No, no, I'm not talking about just stats. I'm just that's saying as, as an actual stats. basketball player and in, in well, I'm what saying he's that's a lot to, to his say. Team. He's six. He's six eight. He's two hundred and what pound? Mike was nowhere close to that. So he was still Yeah, I get you. I'm saying Mike can, was killing them. Okay, at I got six, you. But can we acknowledge Mike, six, that? Six four, six six. 
Right, but let me ask you this. Can, can we acknowledge the fact that Jordan had better personnel around him the entire time, including probably the best coach I of all time? I don't know. I, I'm, oh, yeah, you got to get that. You have to admit. Yeah, you got to get that. You have to admit this, yeah. though. You have to admit, and I don't know how you, you know how we say it, but LeBron has decided to be the coach, and you can't argue with that. He has decided I, to be his own coach. And I so can I don't see know if that he, point. I, I, I don't even know that. if he want to have a. I, I don't even know if he want a, a Phil Jackson on his team because he the coach. He needs to be the coach. So Mike said, "Hey, if Phil want to come in and coach me and but take which me to the came next first, level, the chicken or the egg? Does I, he want to be the coach because <laughs> it ain't no Phil Jackson around, oh, or it ain't Phil, no Phil Jackson hey, around because he hey, wants to be the coach? Let me tell you how it is. If Carl and Carl know this, Phil retired. Phil could have went right over to Cleveland if he wanted to, and he left because Kobe was being, according to his book, Kobe was being a bit much, so he had to leave. So he was available. I just don't think Brown. I don't think LeBron ever wanted to Phil Jackson, so I don't think that's a good argument. I just argument. think it's, I, I just think no one man has ever carried a team the way that LeBron that we've seen. But Carl, do you know? I, I just heard this at, this morning at the gym. They said not one player on his entire team scored more than twenty points during that whole first series. What your la your, the statement you just made, I am a hundred and forty percent in agreement with. Like for real, in terms of the load that he carrying, ain't nobody in the league touching that. We've never seen anything yeah. like it. My man played eighty two games at the highest of levels and literally carried his squad. You take LeBron off the squad, Carl. What, oh, where, where do the Pacers finish? Oh, this, uh, the Pacers were murdered. Oh, they would have won. I'm, 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 sorry, no, I'm sorry. Where, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What are the Cavs finish? They would have been about the number nine, well, they ten. They'd have been at the bottom of that. No, yeah, they wouldn't even be in the playoffs. And here go the thing. I was looking at this, right? So LeBron, think about when LeBron left, left Cleveland the first time. What happened? They got the number one pick in Kyrie Irving. So they went from the finals to the worst team in the league with one player leaving. Mm. Then he went to Miami. They won a couple chips. And when he left, they went to one of the worst teams in the league. Guess what happened when Jordan decided to go play baseball for a season? You know how many games the Bulls won that next season? 60. I, t- hey, yeah, I told I'm you sure. he had some research, e. I'm just saying, they got to you, you can't, You can't knock it, but when Michael Jordan... 60, bro. That's like one of the best teams in the, the league team. without Michael Jordan. Yeah, but I'm saying... So, of course, you, you add Jordan on to that. That's like saying you give... Um, well, I wouldn't say you, you, add Le- it LeBron on, LeBron right now to Houston. It's like, it's over. No, of no, no. I wouldn't say add on. He didn't add on. But what Mike did was Mike made that team great. So when he left, they didn't fall like... Uh, um, they didn't fold like Cleveland did because he takes all the weight. What Mike did when Phil Jackson came, he gave up scoring. Don't forget, Mike was scoring 60-some points a game, too. So he, so he decided that he was no longer want to be the best player in the league no more. And he made the decision that I'm going to distribute the ball evenly and be a part. And Mike will tell you, Mike always says, I ain't telling you that I'm the greatest player that ever played. He said, I played on the greatest team that ever played. So, it's, so the focus is different. LeBron does want to be that guy and take the weight on him. And I ain't mad at him. He's doing a phenomenal job at it. But Mike just made up in his mind, I'm tired of losing. I'm not interested in scoring 60 points no more and coming up short. I want to I want to play team ball. And he made that decision because Mike could have kept doing whatever he was doing. He could have kept doing that. So I, I, so I don't take nothing away from LeBron. Greatest player, like you said, well, we can say he's the greatest player ever, whatever that means. He is the greatest player. But I'm saying okay, my number that's all one. I, that's all I said yeah, from the jump, bro. That's my, all my I number said. one is Michael Jordan just because he got that dog. And I, and I still say to this day, that's what LeBron is missing. I, but I, I don't think it's fair to say LeBron don't have that dog, though. That's uh, he not don't fair. got that dog, bro. Yeah, no, it's, it's not the dog, same, bro. see. That's not the he same. No, it's not, dog, no, no, no. Bro. It's not the same. It ain't nowhere Don't get close. me wrong. I will, I will concede, but it's not fair to say LeBron don't he, he, have the He's dog. a competitor. I mean, he, he, you that. just literally oh, watched no. him go for 40-something in Game 7. And watch and, this, And though. if you go look at all the Game 6 and 7s that he's had where the closeout games, he's averaged the highest points per game in those games. But why? Because Mike I was didn't say, play yeah. in them games. Yeah. Mike didn't play in them games. That's why he better than Mike in that. Mike didn't take. He, Mike got that dog. You didn't go seven with Mike. You didn't go six. If you were a below average team like the Pacers, Mike would have wiped the Pacers off in four or five games. It wouldn't have lasted that long. LeBron does allow it to go that long. Maybe because he is. 
playing 82 doggone games and 40 <laughs> doggone eight minutes. Maybe that, maybe he got to take a break. But I'm just telling you, when Mike played, you didn't get to a game seven because he had that dog. Now, LeBron got way more dog now than he maybe had six, seven years ago. But I promise you, Kobe and Mike, they came in with that dog, bro. They came in with that dog. Oh, oh, no questions asked. No questions asked, bro. And I just think that's what I think that's what LeBron is missing. But in terms of a, a athlete and a specimen, bro, ain't nobody on the planet. I just, you know, I, I mean, I, I would like. I mean, I'm not trying to be argumentative. I would like to see what y'all say. Why, why you would say he doesn't have a dog when he's clearly performed at the highest levels in the most this clutch year, moments? The last few, the last few years, he's taken his game to the next level. But when, when the oh, first and, and, couple I mean, seasons, and here goes he the thing: hit. this conversation is ongoing because the way that he literally had his best season ever this year. So oh, you're no talking question. about. You no know, question. at least we got three, four five. more years Absolutely. in his prime. So we, the body of work is not completed yet. Absolutely. I'm just saying at this point right now, I'm watching what he's doing. And who knows? It's he phenomenal. could lose to the Raptors. I'm not tripping. Yeah. I'm saying with his current body of work, I have never seen a greater basketball player in my life. I just saw, again, on TV this morning, which made me think about it. And they were talking about it on our group text. LeBron James has led his team in scoring and assists every single year he's been in the NBA. I know, but I keep telling you, though, that's, that's good, but it's... <laughs> It's not good, and 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 there's a reason why he's doing it. <laughs> I'm saying it's a re- it's, it's a team sport. It's a team sport, and so the fact that you carrying the load on your own and you playing 82 games, 40 some minutes, it's not it's not tennis, bro. It's basketball, and you gonna wear you you can't possibly do that and win championships. So I'm you right. He is the stat king. He putting up numbers. He got his team on his back. But it's and a team wins. sport. I, I hate how I, I hate how people <laughs> try to act like the three wins just ain't nothing. He ain't the Buffalo Bills now. He got three. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's still a lot. Three. He does have three. <laughs> He Larry Bird, I think, got three. You know what I'm saying? Or four, and, one and, of the two. And, and that's why we comparing him to Larry Bird, and we're not comparing him to MJ. No, nah, you can't. That's I'm just why. saying, man, yeah. you can't just go that's off the, of just rings. Like, it, it, there's circumstantial stuff that yeah. goes along with it. When you're a fan, there is. But when you are taking the test and you're getting all A's and you don't pass the bar exam, hey, nobody tripping on your little A's. It doesn't matter until you can until you can do the, 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 what you came to do, and you didn't come to get stats. You you came to win championships. That's the I, game. I agree That's that championships basketball. is the most That's important. The That's the most important yeah. thing. I it agree is. with that. It is. I don't think it's the only measure. It's not. But Mike got sick, so you can't. And put I think him he's in done category. enough of the other measures <laughs> oh, to <possible>. overtake. <laughs> like let's say you get, let's say in like a game, you get five <laughs> points for every championship, and then you get like a one point for scoring, assists, all of that. Yeah, no, like you don't get he's that, past though. that with the yeah, three you chips. Don't get that. What's that with called? the three chips and all that other stuff. Extra credit work. That's why I couldn't pass the test because all that extra credit work I was doing. Trump can never pass uh, the test. Hey, all, so, all I'm up, saying, hey. I just want to know how <laughs> is this argument going to be resolved, y'all, because I've been in the middle of this argument for the last I 10 years. About that. We were arguing this. Yeah, like, like, how is this resolved? Yeah. Well, well, here, no, here's the one thing he said that is to his credit. MJ gone. LeBron's still playing. You know what I'm saying? I want to so say this di- to all the kids who are listening, though. I want to listen. I want to say this to all the kids that are listening. Do not get a participation <laughs> trophy. I want y'all to have that dog. All right. If you're gonna follow the Just, ECA see what I'm way, you see his little shots that like that. I need all you to have that like that. That 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 you that. Yeah. I need all my little babies out there though to take after him. Just that participation. The, the boy and, got and, three and, rings. He yeah. has three world championships. I, I need all my little babies out there to have that dog. I don't need you to tell me that you did. So let me ask you a question, Carl. Did Charles Barkley have that dog? Charles Barkley. He definitely had a he, he had a Did dog. He? he had a dog. Okay, and you say I Westbrook and you say him. Westbrook got that dog. How many rings he got? Zero. So two yeah, people still, that we know got up. that dog got zero rings. Yeah, no, so no, both just dog. Gone. Your dog <laughs> is dead. No, no. The dog, <laughs> Westbrook ain't. Take him out of that and put him out of his misery, Carl. To his point, Westbrook ain't finished, so you can't, you gotta do the same thing you're doing with LeBron. You gotta give Westbrook some time to get his superpower team <laughs> and win one. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another kids, non-finished argument, which yeah. means we I'm gotta listen to this some more, hey, y'all. Hey. Uh, no, no, Carl, you got to hear me out, though. He always brings it up. I, I, Jordan is the, the, the whole world agrees. Kids that don't even live here but, agree with that. So I never bring it up. It's never important yeah, no, to me. No, no, no. But I'm but saying, I just, I, 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 you just been sneak dissing for like the last two weeks on the group <laughs> I ain't tech. I nothing. Carl, was he sneak dissing? Yeah, definitely. You put a couple yes. in there. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a sneak this. Hey, and, and then and then Carl. So the, I was tweeting y'all. I mean, I was uh, texting y'all because I was uh, watching the game and LeBron was going off. He like seven for seven. I'm like, I hope y'all watching King James. The whole night. So then I leave to go get Kendrick something to eat, and I guess Indiana start coming back. Yeah. He on the text talking about, oh, he quiet now. He quiet now. I, I, I said, was quiet. Okay. I said uh, you're not being fair. So, so he, well, he, he, hey, he, I'm going to give him fire six months. No, no, I'm going to put fire in it. What happens if they had lost to Indiana in your book, see? Oh, he would have no, been. Still, there was uh, the hey, whack I, team. His the no, whack no, no. team, and Here's so that's why LeBron. No, could, no I'm yeah. saying yesterday, I mean, well, what would, whatever day it is, that solidified it, Carl. That was the cement. When I saw him go off like that and carry his team by himself, not one person on his and team putting up yeah. any points. He can't lose. Or that's what I love about LeBron fans. He cannot. Well, if, I, if, you know what I love about Jordan win. fans is the revisionist history. He might never <laughs> play the game five. He swept every game. No, he, said he played seven. the greatest team he that ever lived. Seven. He said seven. He never played the game uh, seven. Hey, so <laughs> hey, so for no, I'm just saying though. But y'all swear you swear Mike was playing the best teams that ever lived. And hey, I'm hey, like, hey, yo, I, I went know. back. I'm, I'm like, studying. okay, Patrick, I you give win. you that. I'm not a fan of Michael Jordan's enough to do this type of homework and research. <laughs> I can't tell you what Isaiah Dumars and my, Microwave Vinny Microwave did. I don't know enough about the Chicago Bulls to go back in history like that and you'll be shocked. I never went to a Bulls game. I never even really watched the Bulls on TV until it was time for the finals. So you're absolutely right. I don't know. But I do know that LeBron is, so, is in such a great position because if he loses – is he had a whack team. If he wins, it's because he put the whole team on his back. So it's a win-win anytime you talk about LeBron. There's no way for him to lose. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That segment was brought to you by Organifi. All right? So here's the deal. To truly thrive in all areas of your life. If you want to thrive like LBJ. Like LeBron. There you go. Right. You cannot right. ignore the importance of good health. All right? I've learned this firsthand. And for many of us, time is our most valuable asset. That's why I love Organifi Green Juice, an organic superfood uh, green juice powder, you just add water to it and put it in and get your greens at any time. When you invest in your health, you gain more time because you got more energy to focus through your day. The best thing about Organifi Green Juice is it actually tastes good. For all the listeners, we have a special deal so you can try it yourself. Use the code SUCCESS at www.organifi.com to receive 20% off your order. Again, that's Organifi.com, spelled O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I. Use the code SUCCESS to receive 20% off. All right, go quit playing with yourself and get that Organifi in and stop drinking all that Coca-Cola and all that foolishness. Put some Organifi in your system hey, and take I got, your health please. and your life to the next level. I got my mom please. addicted to that joint now. She hit it. I, she seen me drink that. She's like, yo, you, I was like, yeah, try it. And she said, dude, in two, three days, she's like, yo, I feel the difference. She's like, I don't oh, know yeah. how. Like, I just got more energy. I'm like, yep, let's get it. I'm telling yep. y'all. Shout out to Organifi. You got a whole shipment in. And uh, I've been on the gold, too. The gold, I really like the gold. The gold actually tastes even better, I think. So, uh, yeah, yeah, check it out, man. It's, uh, yeah, it's good, man. So, E. You uh you had something on your mind, so yes, we can, I guess we can get so to the rest of the for the rest of the world. Then not a PTI is over. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I apologize for those of you who wasted thirty minutes of your good time <laughs> on that foolishness. To realize but, that the king right, has right, arrived. Right, right. <laughs> right, y'all see where CJ is. Um, no man, I, I posted something um yesterday or actually last night, and I don't do the face. Uh, f well, it wasn't Facetime Live. I did a video. And put it up on our, our Breed University. I love how platform. he shows his age sometimes. FaceTime, <laughs> Facebook, I did they FaceTime all the same. Live. Yeah, it's all the same. <laughs> FaceTime Live. Yeah, all the yeah, same. When you get to my age, it don't even matter. You just like, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And, uh, you know, I, but I had a conversation with my son, I was telling him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he, had, he made a comment. It was just like, man, Dad, you know, you know, I've been, you know, of course, he's doing the, um, the summer camp, you know, and, he pretty much doing 80, 90 percent of the work. And he just was like, yo, it's hard, you know, and I was trying to fill him out like, OK, is it hard? Like you understand it's hard and you just saying it's hard and you're going to keep moving or are you saying it's hard? Like almost like, man, it's, it's hard, you know. And so we had the conversation about it. And, and I was thinking, I was like, yo, it's, it's crazy that people don't understand, like, really that hard is a part of it. You know, like, like seriously, and I'm not playing. And I'm going to ask you guys a question in a second, but I'm not playing when I say, like, hard. I don't mean, like, hard every six months or hard annually. Hmm. 
Like, hard, like you got to factor in like a, a 60-40 hard. You know what I'm saying? A 70-30 hard. You know, and I think for him, you know, he had this idea of this camp, you know, because he worked for Michigan State for four years, basketball, you know, and he's associated, you know, with basketball to whatever extent. And I think he thought it's like, oh, OK, you know, we just going to do a summer camp and it's going, you know, I've gone to take controls. I've gone to um, 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 what are some of the other ones? Greatness is upon you. You know what I'm saying? I've been to, you know, uh, uh, game changers, you know, and I, I guess because he's been around and he sees the success we're having, he's just thinking like, oh, I'm just going to boom, 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 boom. And it's going to be 100 percent. And yo, yesterday I heard it in his voice like, yo, mm. it's this hard. And normally I'm going to be real. I try my hardest when, you know, he had when me and him are talking, especially on personal stuff. I, I back off. I'm like, yo, E, come on, you grown. Just back off. It ain't that deep. You know what I'm saying? Just back off. He 22, he gonna learn. But this one, I was like, no, I'm not backing down because this ain't about to change with age. Like, it's not like you go 32, 42, 52, and now hard don't exist no more. You know what I'm saying? Hard stay with you as long as you are alive. I mean, see, you just, you know, uh, unfortunately, this year, like in a couple, what, hmm. a, a, a week Two week span, you buried yeah. two family members. Hmm, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm, yeah. I'm, I've buried two family members. You, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, bro, hard ain't going nowhere. I don't care how old you are. Right. And so I had to really just, like, not in a negative way, but I had to lay into my man, like, yo, bro, if you can't do hard, you might as well go and just check out. You know what I'm saying? Go get on welfare or something and let the system take care of you. You feel me? And I'm sure that's hard too in its own right. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, yo, if you think, and then it was kind of one of those situations like, okay, well, when this happens, then, you know, and I was like, oh, I hope you don't believe that. I hope you don't believe that when this happened, that hard ain't going to be there no more. Like, no, 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 no. With every level that you go to, hmm. with, with, with the success that you have, yo, bro, it's going to be hard. And yeah. so what I wanted to do today was I just wanted to talk about um, I, I want to do something different. Like, yep, let's talk about as an entrepreneur or ETA or whatever, what's the hardest thing? Give me one or two things that's been the hardest for you. But I also want, even though we can't save people from hard, let's give some real practical things on, yo, it's going to be hard. But if you do one, two and three, you might take the intensity away. So it's like when I get a shot, Carl, I ain't going to lie. I still don't like shots. You feel me? Like, I'm still not on no, mm -hmm. let me go, let me just go get my blood drawn. And so there's a couple of things that I have to do when they stick me with that joint. It, I'm not going to sit here and say it don't hurt because I do those things. But I can honestly say when I'm watching him stick me, it just seemed like it's a little bit more intense. <laughs> so I got to close my eyes, turn my head, play my favorite song in my mind. And by the time he stick me, and, you know, get draw the blood, it's over. So give me, you know, we can start with you, C. Give me, give me in terms of entrepreneurship, like for real, what has hard been to you? What's been something that has been a challenge? And then what recommendations will you give to other individuals, whether it's marriage or whatever it is, to kind of get through hard and get on the other side of that thing? Yeah, one of the quotes that I love, and it's funny you talking about this because, you know, I was literally, right before I called you, I was thinking to myself, y'all know I've been fighting it for a minute to have a full-time personal assistant. <laughs> and everybody been on me about it. And it's a collective group of people. Shout out to Tay and Cam and everybody who helps me, you know, when I ask for it and make sure I'm in line. But I'm like, yo, time. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think the first thing, like, time is of the essence. And I think, to me... Um, the quote I love, you know, it doesn't get easier. You just get better. Mm -hmm. And that's that's literally what it's been for us. Like, it is just as hard now as it was, yeah, you know, back yeah. when we first started. Yeah. It's just a yeah. different type of hard. Yeah. But I think I've gotten better. But I think, E, when you were talking, I was like, yo, I think the thing is the expectation that yeah. ends up killing you, right? Yeah. Because you come into it and you think, Oh, okay, this is, you know, your famous saying, it's finna be a breeze, right? No. Yeah, like, it's finna be a breeze. Yeah, and you think that, and because you have this expectation that, oh, this is gonna be easy, it's, you know, this is whatever, you jump out there, and when it hits you, your body and your mental is just not ready for that mm -hmm. type of pressure, that type of pain. <clears throat> Whereas those of us who go in knowing it's gonna be a dogfight, right? Like, from the jump, 
I think we have a different expectation level. And I think it's those people who you got your business plan together. You didn't talk to everybody. Your mom think it's a great idea. The world thinks it's a great idea. You bought the camera. You got the money. You get out there. Boom, you do your thing and nothing happens. And, and a lot of people don't know how to react to that, right? Like that thing right there breaks them. And I think one of the things that, you know, blessed us is we were naive enough to really not know. Not know. What I to was be just going to say that. Yep. Not know. You know yep. what I'm saying? So yep. we didn't know. Like, for instance, YouTube, we didn't know if a thousand yep. views was a lot. We didn't yep. know if five million views. Like, we didn't know. We didn't have a concept of what success was in our mm. industry. So we yep. just kept going to work. And so... There was no barometer that we said, oh, okay, by, you know, by the time Carl and I yes. hit, you know, 27, then we're going to be making 100,000. Yeah. It was never that. It, there was no expectation on it other than we would get up and do what we were supposed to do every day. And I think when you have this expectation, like you said, Jalen going to these conferences and things like that and thinks, oh, okay, I kind of done it on this level. Somebody helped me. And then, boom, you run up against it, and you're trying to get a facility, and people telling you no, and now you're trying to book these people, and they saying no, and you forget to call this person back, and this happened, this happened, this happened, and you get overwhelmed to the point where you don't know what to do. And I'm saying I think one of the greatest strengths you can have is going in expecting a dogfight. And when you get that dogfight, you can be adequ adequately prepared to deal with it. So what, what happens, see, is you just said, see, coined it. Like, that's the answer, like, I, I, I'd say. But what, what happens, see, is the average person goes in with the business plan. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've spent six months or however long, and you got consultants, and you got some people to help oh, you, and, and you so put sweet, it together. Girl, and it's so sweet. sweet. It makes it. sense, dude. Oh. Like, you look at the math, and like, yo, if I can sell three shirts, I'm going to get, it's 25, I'm going to get 75. And if I do this, and I'm going to do this. But the reality is, and, and I think that's the big Nothing wrong with planning, but that's the thing. You cannot be yeah. prepared for everything. The reality is you're going to print out bad as you want a breath. Bottom line. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You can't be prepared uh, for everything. As much as you're prepared, there's stuff that's going to happen. I was taking, uh, I was messing around with some assessment that I saw online. I forgot the name of it. I was just clicking through Facebook the other day. I saw this assessment and I clicked on it. And one of the things it was saying was, <clears throat> that's the issue with most people. So back to what he's saying, like you go in with this full expectation of because you do this, this is going to be the result. And it's the farthest thing from the truth. The truth. I, I, I'm looking at, I, was, I don't know why I just thought about this, but I remember growing up, like I go to the beach and you would see a piece of glass and it's smooth. You know what I'm saying? Like just a piece of broken glass, like on the beach, just laying there and it's smooth. And I was like, yo, what in the devil? Like, let me think this through. Like, how did this glass get smooth? The water has no expectation. The water is going back, coming forward, pushing it, pulling it. It has no expectation. Like, you get what I'm saying? So after however long, months, years, or whatever, like this yeah. piece of glass just sitting there, what yeah. happens is it's just a consistent effort. It's just a consistent effort. With, and when I, I don't want to say no expectation because I'm you're not just going to do this thing blindly. It's got to lead to some, you know, some goal. But I'm saying water is moving. The, 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 the waves in the ocean is coming back, coming forward. This piece of glass is rubbing against sand. It's rubbing against rocks. And over time, this thing is worn all the way down to this smooth little mm. pretty stone yep. almost. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I, I don't know why I thought about that. But, like, that, that's, that's the thing. That's the key that I see to this. Like, you just have to really become that water. Like, yo, the end result is it's going to get there. Like, bottom line, lifting weights, so you talked about, you just get used to it. Like, if you lift the same 30 pounds every day after six months, that thing is going to feel like nothing. You know what I mean? But your body gets used to that after a while. So... Yeah, and, and let me not steal East Thunder, but I'm going to say this, and this goes for myself. Like, I just never been smart enough or sweet enough to think that something was going to be easy. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm just being real. Yeah. And he says it all the time. Sometimes you're so yeah. smart. And that's what throw you off. But I'll be real. The only thing that ever came easy to me like that is probably speaking in public and playing sports. That's you know what I mean? But like, as a businessman, yeah. as an entrepreneur, yeah. like trying to figure out this branding stuff, like none of I, I expected yeah. to be yeah. behind the eight ball. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I just right. wasn't never right. sweet enough. Like, I think some people, you're so smart and you're so sweet and that's your downfall because you come in like, ha ha, behold, I'm here. I'm about to kill And I it. never had that mentality. I always came in like, okay, these dudes is killing me. I need to go hard. You know what I mean? And so I think that helped me out too. Yeah. But E, I'm anxious to hear what you got yeah, to no, say. No, 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 I, I want to, I, I, I have something, but Carl, I want to speak to that. And I want to just give as many, you know, recommendations as I can. And I want to say, don't take, you know, when you bad as you want a breath, you know, uh, 12 years to get a four-year degree, like, don't take it personal, you know? And I think where most of you guys, you know, go wrong and where you want to quit 
is because you start seeing your goals didn't happen or certain, certain things didn't happen. You know, as he was talking about, you know, when Mike played, there was a certain season. As LeBron is playing, there is free agency. So there's some things that are like out of your control, you know, when, when I don't care how great you are. You know, there's some things about Cleveland that LeBron didn't like why he left because a part of him, he wanted to win and he couldn't really resolve. Yeah, I want to be here for Cleveland and help Cleveland get to the next level. But at the same time, I, I'm great. And I, I do want to see um, some 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 rewards like I want to see some benefits and I'm not seeing it in Cleveland, you know, and, and he probably was thinking like, I don't want to be the stats dude for the rest of my life. I, I want to win a championship. And so it was a lot of turmoil, you know, when he left. But what I liked about when he left and he did his reports, people was like, he didn't lead the right way. Bro, I don't know if there's a, I don't. Right, what like, is the right way to lead? I, yeah, yeah, when you, when something don't go right, you know, when it's hard, that was a hard decision for him. You know, he did the Boys and Girls Club. Like, what else you want him to do? You know, so I, I think when it's hard, one of the things that you have to do is, and I, bro, this is, I, man, I'm listening to Cardi B, y'all. Man, Cardi B got a song, man, Be Careful. And she says at the end, like, yo, I, I wish I was like, I wish I ain't had no heart like you. I do. Like, I, I wish that I could just go get with another dude and act like I don't love you. I wish I didn't have feelings no more. I do. But, but I don't. I'm not you. You know what I'm saying? And I was just, when I heard her say that, I was like, yo, that's the hard part is that our feelings are attached. You feel me? And so I would say to you, guys, I was on a, man, I was on a, I was on a run in terms of, you know, my diet, in terms of my exercise, you know, I was on a, I was on a full blast run. And then I got hit with this, whatever the sickness was, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't had no energy. And then, then unfortunately, because me and my girl are traveling together, what happens? I get it. I pass it to her. I overcome it. She get it. She pass it to me. You know what I'm saying? And so I had to just tell myself as I was getting out of shape, like, yo, E, bro, it is what it is. You didn't you, you didn't, uh, you traveling, you in airports, you in hotels, and they ain't necessarily cleaning these hotels like people think. You know, the airplane ain't, ain't nobody sanitizing that joint, you know what I'm saying, from, from plane to plane. E, you've been on different time zones, you've landed sometimes at midnight, you've had to drive three hours to get somewhere. It's like, bruh, don't take it personal. You, you, you know how to, what, how do I say it? Like, you know how to run. So when you get over this sickness and when, and, when, and when the weather break or you somewhere nice, I was in Florida the other day, killing it, you know, and, 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 and it's just like, yo, it is what it is, E. And I think a lot of y'all, you just take it personal. You fall off the bandwagon or you didn't get the contract or you and your girl got into it and you married now and it didn't look like the honeymoon stage is over and you just tripping. It's like, yo, don't take it personal. And I always tell people who married, I can't stand her. I don't want to be with her no more. I was like, yo, do me a favor. Go back to before you couldn't stand her. Or go back before you could stand. I don't know him. if it's that far back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> How far I'm back saying. we talk? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, can we go back and let's just talk about what were you doing? Okay, let's try to do that and see if it, because I already know what I got to do. I already know yes. how many miles I got to run. I already, you, you know, so I'm just saying, I just think one of the recommendations is stop taking it so hard and stop taking it so personal because you're putting energy into that. And that's energy that could really go into you making the next shirt that said when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe. And can I tell y'all something? It's way more of those in the earth right now than it hmm. is as bad as you want to breathe. Bruh. And, but hey, it wouldn't have been please, if we Somebody stopped. please explain to our may, maybe fairly <laughs> new <laughs> podcast listeners because we have referenced it four <laughs> times now. So I don't hey, want to hey, say it because I get sick at the stomach. Uh, so. No doubt. I'll say, I'll, I'll say short. So our first, our first, I'm talking about phenomenal first. design. We planned yeah. it all out. Keywords planned it, talked about it. CJ did his due diligence, got the designs done, sent us the designs. We Everybody looked at it, fire, printed the shirts, and we printed out the word breathe without the E. So the shirt said, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breath, then you'll be successful, which is still good. Yeah. And shout out to my brother who was like, what's the problem? Bad yeah. as you want to breath. Still, still grammatically, what, what, it could work. What's the deal? But yeah, so, hey, so 
And I can't put it all on C because C showed me that joint. That's what I said. We saw I, it. You know, it took, we it saw took it. me 12 to get a four. This is where that goes bad. <laughs> this is where it goes bad. Because I saw that joint and I saw Fire. it as when you want to succeed as bad as oh, you want to no breathe. Oh. That's how I saw it, bro. I was like, let's go. So, E, I want to add. Hurt. I want to add one thing real quick, though, because unfortunately, a lot of people don't get the opportunity for whatever reason to operate in passion and purpose. And I think that's a critical factor to it, because if it's something that you feel that like if it's that important to you, like you find a way to get back at it. You know what I'm saying? Like like let's just say running like let's say eating. You know what I'm saying? I don't care how long you want to fast or how long you want to do something. Like, it is that important. It's necessary to life. Breathing. Like, you're going to get up and you're going to get back at it. You see what I'm saying? So, unfortunately, for a lot of people, you operating in just a job, it operating in, you know, just doing something to make money. And that is hard. Let me just be real with you. That makes it, like, two, le- two levels harder. That's, that's LeBron against uh, Golden State by himself. That's two levels harder because... For some reason, man, when it's the thing that you know you're called to do, you're passionate about, regardless of what happens, you don't feel right unless you're doing that thing. So I'm saying, look, see, well, CJ, what's the line you always use? Look for that thing that comes easy to, well, say, how you say it? See, it comes easy. Yeah, your gift is what comes easy to you that's hard for most. For most, yep. You operating in that thing, and I'm telling you, your resilience going to go up times 10 just because it's what you're made for. It's what you're built for. You can resist it more. You can't resist. I can't resist 82 games in the NBA right now. I hurt my arm walking from East House to mine yesterday. I can't, I can't resist it. You see what I'm saying? But the reality is LeBron can't come here and do what I'm doing either. Uh, hopefully not. I don't know. He uh, might I promise be. he can. <laughs> but yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, but you operate yeah. in that thing and your gift. Like I'm telling you, like it's a lot easier to be resilient. So if you find it like you super yeah. hard and you can't yeah. get it done yeah. it, that's probably yeah. a sign that you you yeah. might need to start yeah. planning you're yeah you in the wrong yeah. lane you just need to start planning yeah, your exit lane. from that yeah yeah and not be so caught up on this is my lane this is my lane oh. i'm gonna tell y'all and i'm gonna shock y'all with the hardest thing for me has been momentum man you know mm-hmm. the hardest thing for me and 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 guys you know as, as you're listening just because I'm able to do it, don't, don't, it doesn't mean it's not hard. Like, there are classes that you can pass, but it, it, it was a grind. And then there are classes you pass, and it was a breeze, you know. But what's been very challenging for me is staying at this level of energy for this long, you know. Um, you know, being able to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and post and, and try to post and not just post, but try to make sure that that verbiage matches that, you know, that 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 um, Instagram that, uh, story that went out or that post that went out, you know. And when I see people, you know, smiling and, and giving the energy and hugging, you know, it's, it's one thing when you do it for, you know, a few years. You know, it's another thing when you have to do it, you know, every time you go to the airport or every time you speak, you know what I'm saying? Or every time you're on a podcast or every time you're getting interviewed. You know, it's, it's challenging. And we even look at, you know, in terms of basketball, I mean, you look at it. That's how we start judging the greats from the goods is because they play at a certain level and they're able to sustain that. So that's been a challenge for me in, um, you know, in saying to myself, OK, E, 2018, you got to take it to another level. But it's like, yo, I took it to another level last year. You know, say, all right. 2019, or I should say first quarter, all right, now it's the second quarter, now it's the third quarter. Momentum. Maintaining this momentum, yeah. you know, bro, it could be a challenge. And so I just want to say th- to those of you out there who are trying to do it, like, bro, I think the best thing in the world is when I was a C student. Bro, it was so easy to... I'm no about pressure. When I, was a D, when I was a D student <laughs> and a C student, bro, I promise you, it was the easiest thing in the world. Like Carl said, it was no expectations of me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wasn't no teachers looking at me, asking me questions. You know what I'm saying? They weren't. It, it was like, for real, it was like... You know I don't know. You, you feel me. You, and, and, and don't embarrass yourself or me <laughs> Try to ask me. Ask me yeah. Oh, because I might say something stupid to you in the class, you know? And so it, it was easier. Now people have expectations. So you can see me in the airport. I'm talking about, bruh, I've been on red eyes where I've been up all day in a conference and somebody will see me, E.T., what up? And I can't be like, yo, bro, not right now, bro, I'm tired. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, not right now. Or I could have got into it, you know, back in the day with my girl and we walking through the airport. E.T. I'm like, not right now. Me and Didi just got into it. I'm not, I don't feel like talking. I, I, don't, I can't do that. You feel me? And so Speaking of which, I had me a little celebrity encounter. You know what I'm saying? Every once in a while, somebody <laughs> recognized the kid. Where was <laughs> this at? Shout out to my man. I didn't get his name on the beach in South Carolina. Uh, he ran up to okay. me and was like, see? Okay. I was on like, the oh, beach so I know too. he listened to the Guru. podcast. So uh, shout out to my one supporter yeah. out there. <laughs> hey, uh, he, and he caught you on the on, on home court advantage with the Guru boy. Oh, oh no, no doubt. Oh, the no, beach. No, right, there absolutely. it is. That's caught what it you was. in the water. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So, I just wanted to shout my man out and tell him no, that no, the yeah, love yeah. was appreciated. Yeah, get the name though next time when he get his full, he get his full recognition. But he probably smiling. He probably listening. He oh, know he definitely he listened to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, the only people who know me and Carl. Yeah, yeah, he, 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 he smiled. But I, I was just saying, man, like for real, you you don't don't you know what I'm saying like to keep that momentum, man. Give me one day at a time. You know, don't don't worry about next week or the week after. You know, just concentrate on okay when I get up today. You know, do I have that energy today? You know, um, you that's know, so don't hard, put, though, man. Yeah, yeah I was good. Yeah. For most people, uh -huh. that's it just is. so hard to keep that momentum. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was talking to somebody today, and they were talking about, like, man, you know, I can do it, and it's cool, you know, but, like, man, after a while, I get burnt out, and I ebb and flow. And I was like, yo, well, that's the difference between the goods and the greats, is the oh, goods yeah. can do it every once in a while. The greats can maintain that level, so you got to find that extra gear. But I think it is so hard, man. You go so hard for so long, and then your natural reaction is to kind of slow down and burn out a little bit. And then once you start feeling that heat on you again, and you raise the level of intensity back up. But to be able to maintain that, that speed is, um, it, it is truly, you know, something well, that all tough. the greats have mastered, you know? Yeah. Carl, you didn't say what yours was. You piggyback off of C, but what's been one of the hardest things for you as it relates to, you know what I'm saying, entrepreneurship? I mean, uh -huh. anything, marriage, kids, what's that yeah, thing that's like, man? I'm trying to take over my moderator yeah. job. I'll ask Carl when it's time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, I so, <laughs> so weirdly enough, e, the hardest part for me was transitioning because I'm coming from the science background. And the hardest transition is not knowing what to do from day to day, like making it up. Because you coming from science is a very linear process. You know what I'm saying? You come, I'm coming from the Caribbean. It's very structured. You know what I'm saying? Like I knew exactly what to do. My parents had expectations. Like everything was in place. So coming over to entrepreneurship for me, and it's just like, yo, I know we want to do this, but there's some days I get up. Well, not now, but there's some days where I wake up like, okay, I know we're supposed to do this, but how, like, what am I doing today to get there? And I'll just start doing something. You know what I mean? And a, a hard part of that is sometimes you're doing the wrong thing or sometimes you're doing you busy work and, and thinking that you're doing something. But I think that's one of the, tr the, the difficult parts for me of like, yo, what are you supposed to be doing sometimes? Because you got this big lofty goal, but you know what I'm saying? We don't have that clear path to get there. So it's like the gift and the curse. Like that's the advantage because we, we, can, we can make, um, you know, we, we, we're not bound by anybody else's expectation or anything like that, so we can make our decisions and move quickly and make a mistake and move on. But at the same time, like, what are you supposed to be doing? You know what I mean? Like, I'm, a, I'm new to this. Like, how do I even do an LLC? Like, how do I get started? Like, we're, you know, okay, I got the LLC. Like, how do I, like, I remember just real quick, when we had to, when we started doing the shirts the first time, dude, there were so many different pieces of software we had to connect. And again, we didn't know. So I'm going off of, Sean calls it Dr. Google. I'm on Google, okay, we're going to use Shopify, and then we got to get, oh, Shopify, you can sell on it, but they can't ship. Oh, so we need something to ship. Okay, so now I got to get Shopify, we found this other software, OrderCup. OrderCup don't work on the Mac. It only work on PC. I'm just saying, like, on and on and on, and then, okay, so now we're going to ship with UPS, because we got a little deal with them, and then with UPS, it's just like, yo, how, do, like, I don't know what to do, you know what I'm saying, but... The gift, the gift in it is by doing something, it opens up the next step. So I'm answering the problem for you. By doing something, it opens up the next step. Once we knew that we wanted to do shirts, okay, so you got to get this, you got to get that, you got to get that. But starting out, just to answer your question, starting out, it's just like, man, I'm not sure what to, how to start, what direction to go in. Um, yeah, we just got to make it up as we go. That was, that was tough for me. So C brought up the LeBron and the MJ thing. So I want to bring up something. All right, so, and I need y'all both to answer this for real about hard. People are hard. What's been the hardest part, C? Just keep it 100. What's been the hardest part when you get past that first layer of maybe you, me, and Carl, and you kind of, you know, we, we kind of mesh together for whatever reason. I don't know how it happened, but we mesh together, right? So a lot of people who are in business or married or just whatever, life, and they got to deal with people. What's the hardest part about entrepreneurship, see, and you dealing with people? I can go first if y'all scared to <laughs> no, I'm ready, yeah. 
I, I think mine is probably going to be I yours. I think e. I better re re recuse myself from this <laughs> conversation. <laughs> yeah. So, so E, I mean, you tell me if I'm stealing yours, but I think my my expectation oh, was <laughs> uh, no. My expectation was is that everybody treats my baby the same way I treat it, and that's just unreal. Like I don't. Like, it's an unreal expectation for somebody else to treat Jordan or, and Jesse the way I treat them. It's unreal. You're going to treat them good, but because it's so dear to me and so passionate to me, like, I, I, I expect everybody to have the exact same passion, you know what I mean, and the exact same love. So, I, like, again, you, you could call me at three, sleep or not. Like, you know what I'm saying? That wasn't a challenge. Like, we loved it that much that, like, yo, I'll, I'll get up at three, whatever, talk. If I need to go back to sleep, I can. Chances are I'm not because you're going to tell me I need to do something. But, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, you can't you can't really manufacture that you know down down the road with a lot of the other people you know what I'm saying as you bring it I mean er, er, a lot of companies face that the manager you know not the manager the owner you got this fire staff Chick Fil A you know what I mean but as you go down as you move them to Michigan they're just not as polite you know what I'm saying so I think that's yeah. a, just a, a realistic challenge that you're just gonna face as a business as a, a business owner entrepreneur any of that that's just real. See, you ain't ready yet? <laughs> <laughs> See, he's like, I ain't got nothing. <laughs> oh, he got texting. something. I, hey, my bad, I was texting. <laughs> what was the question what was again? Talking about? Yeah, he got something on. Right. <laughs> yeah, hardest part, dealing with humans, See? Oh, man, where can I start? It's just a laundry list. I think entitlement would be one. Mm. Um, you know, in, in affluenza. You know what I'm saying? Just like, yeah. for real. Yeah. I, I just feel like... In general, man, people ex like ah, man, people just expect stuff to be given to them, and we kind of touched on it before. It's like, it, it, like the internet, and I feel like email and stuff has made stuff so easy for people that the old school grind that it took to actually be on a platform, nobody wants to put in that work. So again, like we talked about, you know, the young man who was emailing me like, oh, I'm about to be on the podcast. Put me on this. Put me on that. And you're confusing you being able to type up 10 words and send them to me on an email with actual work. Like there was a time in this country and a time in, in, in whatever we do where you had to like get on and be out and rocking venues and all of that for people to even know who you were. But now because you have direct access to things, you want to use that as a replacement for actual hard work. Like I really wish people could you know, and, and I, I hate to go ET here, but like, yo, I was borrowing money from my mom and dad. Like I was literally, after we started the company, two years after, I remember calling my mom and telling her I needed $500 to help me pay the rent. Two years after I graduated with a master's degree because we were putting in so much work, but we weren't reaping the rewards yet. And so I just wish that people would have to go through something real and not feel entitled. At no point did I feel entitled during that process to be like, somebody ought to come through here and just bless us with a, with, with a million dollars because we cool or because we nice or because I sent an email. And I think people get it confused um, when, they, when they, again, underestimate how much work it's going to take and they feel this entitled spirit as if they should already be rich and they should already have all this money and they should already have all this stuff. I'll tell you whatever, you know, whoever's listening to this podcast, whatever level y'all think we're at now, I still don't feel entitled to anything. Nothing, bro. I still don't even remotely feel comfortable in where we're at. Yeah. We wake up every day with that same dog and I think now, and not to be on the millennials, it's like, yo, you can do the Instagram, Twitter thing, you can email me, you got direct access and it doesn't really take any actual work to get there that you think is, you know, you, you're supposed to be handed something. And, you know, I just grew up, man. My father worked at General Motors. I saw him get up and go to work for 31 <laughs> years and four days. Please don't rob him of his four days or he will correct you. But I watched my dad get up and go to work for 31 years and four days and never expect anything but the reward of what his job actually gave him. I never seen him complain about, oh, they didn't give us overtime or they didn't give us this or they didn't give us that. He went to work. He got paid for the work he actually did. And I don't know that that exists much anymore where people want to actually go put in the work and then whatever comes from that, be content in knowing you put in the work. Here goes your reward. Here goes what you have. Grateful, but never satisfied. And I think that's a lost art, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, for me, man, I think it's, uh, I like what Carl was saying, you know, uh, but I want to add to, and this might just be the flamingo in me, but just the, man, just ain't the loyalty, man. Like, people ain't loyal no more, you know. And yeah, ain't loyal. <laughs> it hurts, man. Well, you know, that's why I think I said, I'm just feeling this, 
And I'm parents, I'm not telling you to let your kids listen to, you know, be careful by Cardi B <laughs> by any means. You know what I'm saying? There's some strong, there's some strong language. But my wife was like, yo, you didn't play it 10 times. Like, oh yeah, no, nah, it's deep. She's like, what's up? I'm like, yo, boo, that's my anthem right there. Like, that's what I feel like what's wrong with people. You know, and she said the part that I, I mean, it's a couple things she said that I, that I really resonated with. But when she said, I hope what you chasing is worth what you losing. Mm. You know, I was like, yo, that's the real. It's like, I've helped people, man, from the bottom, you know, and got them to a place where they can get on their feet. And the first thing they want to do when they get on their feet is go look for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, yo, you know what sacrifices I made? Like, I always made sure everybody ate. You know what I'm saying? We go out, I make sure everybody eat. I make sure everybody got their check. Like, you ain't never got your check. You know what I'm saying? You never not got your check. You know what I'm saying? And just in general with humans, putting out these free videos and just trying to make sure that, you know what I'm saying, I'm doing my part. Like John F. Kennedy says, not what your country could do for you, but what you could do for your country. And I'm just amazed at how people can allow you to do for them but when it's their time to do for you, they absent. And I'm like, yo, I don't even ask you to do a lot, but where's the loyalty? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I remember when we used to be uh, in college, this is how we always knew who was our friends or not. Uh, the, the, there was no real ma main airport in Huntsville. We had to fly out of Nashville and everybody was supposed to be homies until it was like, Hey, can you pick me up from the airport? And they're like, which one? Like Nashville. It's like, oh, bro, I got a test. Like, you don't even study. You know what you mean? You got a test. Uh, you know? But, I just started. You know what I'm saying? And so I think to me, man, that's the that's the thing that hurts me the most. Like, I don't believe in equal giving. You know what I'm saying? But I do believe in equal sacrifice. And you'll just find that people, like, they can't do it for you unless they get paid. They can't do it for you unless they, but yet you could just sweat blood and tears and make sure you look out for them and look out for their family. You know what I'm saying? And make sure that whatever you have, you know, that, that's, yeah, Cardi B, man. Cardi was like, everything I had was yours. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, what more can I give you? Everything I had was yours. And so, man, that, that's one of the things about humans that burn me is that you have humans that can take, 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 but when it's time to give, like, they check out on you. And, and I just want to mad shout out to Alex. Mad shout out to Alex, man. Y'all yeah, know for sure. he's a yeah. part of the masters of the game. Uh, he loaded up two of his uh, big 18-wheelers and brought water from Atlanta to Flint. We passed the water out today. And shout out to, the, to, to everybody all over the world that has not forgotten Flint. Flint water still ain't right. Mm -hmm. And so, man, he came down, you know, passed out water. And I'm being real. I didn't even know he was coming to do it. I just knew he ran a trucking company. And I hit him up and was like, yo, my wife, she wants, um, she's got, you know, new furniture coming in. So she wants to... Um, gift Jalen with the furniture, furniture that she had. And at first it was just a couch. And then Didi was like, okay, let's do the living room table. I was like, all right, cool. Then it was like all his stuff, his shoes, all the stuff he couldn't, you know, uh, take with him because it cost too much. And Alex was like, yo, E, man, I'm going to be in Flint. I'm, I'll take it back with me. And I'm like, bet. So then I'm not going to say no names because I ain't trying to call nobody out. But somebody who promised me they could do it didn't do their time right. And so they couldn't get it to him at 2 o'clock like he asked. And I called Alex and was like, yo, bro, I'm so sorry, bro. I'm not going to be able to get you the furniture, bro. This is what I'm talking about. It's not equal giving. It's equal sacrifice. He was like, what? I was like, yeah, man. He didn't come through for me. I'm sorry. He was like, E, let me finish, my, let me finish dropping this water off, and then me and my boy going to get in the 18-wheeler. We're going to come to your house and pick <laughs> it up. I'm like, what? I'm like, bro, it ain't that deep, bro. I, he was like, E, let me do I got two runs to make. And then we're going to get the truck and we're going to come pick it up from An you. An extra hour. Ke Bruh, came here, probably I'm 15, Carl, because 18 wheeler. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know how fast they, I'd be doing 80. I don't know how fast they could go. And when he came, I was like, yo, I, I didn't say anything to you about all these bags and stuff. I got a glass table. He's like, E, all what you did for me, bro, I got, I, I was like in a bad place in the hospital. Just some stuff was going on in my life, bro. And them videos got me through. Whatever I could do, to, like, I owe you. And I'm like, bro, you don't owe me nothing. He was like, no, 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 no. I don't owe you nothing, but I owe you. Like, I made that decision to owe you. And I, I, I got this. And so it was so funny. He was like, I just got one favor. I was like, what's up? He's like, bro, if you could just come, when I'm passing out water in Flint tomorrow, if you could be with me. And I was like, yo, bro, I'm going to keep it 100. Like, me and my girl retired. I can't guarantee it, but I'm, 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 but I'm, I'm probably guessing when I asked Didi, 
I'm mm -hmm. probably guessing because Dee Dee does understand loyalty and you just looked out for her son, I promise, I, I guarantee you, bro, let me be respectful and ask, but I'm guaranteeing you, I'm gonna be off in that joint. Man, I talked to my man, I mean, I came in and told Dee Dee, I was like, Dee Dee, boom, boom, boom. She's like, what time you gotta be there? She, I was like, 10 o'clock. She's like, tell my man, we'll be there at 8.30. I was like, got it. <laughs> we went to that joint, Dee Dee stayed in the car the whole time, she didn't get out. And, um, you know, we did our thing, we chopped it up. Why was this dude about to buy everybody that was helping with water food? I was like, bro, I'm from Michigan. I'll take care of it. And no, for my listeners, I didn't get them a vegan sandwiches. I got <laughs> Popeye chicken with Ooh. size and biscuits. You know what I'm saying? Somebody was like, E, did you get them the veggie? I'm, no, I did not. We went Popeye's. <laughs> they, don't, they don't eat like that, all right? So I'm just saying, see, that's one of the things that bothers me. And for those of you who are adults and you don't mind a little strong language, I would suggest that you listen to the song you know what I'm saying? And just for real, I think that's what's made this group strong. I don't think that we're the smartest. Like our families don't come from entrepreneurship. Uh, we've never been given an endowment. We didn't have, our families didn't have, you know, um, monies they put to the side for us to do business. You know, we all came together with a dream and a goal. But I think if you know us, like we family, you know what I'm saying? We brothers. And we've made up in our mind that we're going to give everything we have to each other and, I, and, and I'll say this, everybody eating, every, everybody's living good. Everybody, Some more than others. Some living <laughs> a little better than others. Yeah. I, hey, <laughs> hey, if y'all hey, see C-House versus mine, Carl, especially the new one he getting, I if saw, you see his right. house versus mine, you know C living way sweeter than that. Uh, uh, bro, let me tell you something. Uh, I'm, I'm still on, hey, we still back in you and Didi days when y'all had roaches and rats running. Oh, around. no. No, Carl, hey, you know he feared me hey. now. I don't know what kind of roaches you guys see, but your roaches yeah, must be pretty yeah. expensive. Are they golden? Yeah, hey, <laughs> hey, no, that oh, house. know y'all lying. Yeah, hey, that house, it got an office that's way sweeter than my house. And now he about to get another one that's about to make my house look like a little, the roaches and rat infested spot from back in the day. So, no, be loyal, y'all, for real. If you out there and you listening, there's, there's, nothing, there's no money. That no money, guys, that's as, as the, the, the disloyal, that it, no money. And I'm telling you, if you stay together, you'll be able to do more together. And I'm talking to somebody because there's a group of you that are thinking about breaking up and splitting up and this person got a better opportunity and this person know, know why this is. I'm telling y'all, man, you can do more together than you can apart. So that's what bothers me, see, just the people are not loyal these days, bro. Yeah, I, yeah, yep. And I, I, my favorite line in the song was she said, you got me looking in the mirror different, thinking yeah. I'm flawed because you yeah. inconsistent. Yeah. I was, mm. Wow, yeah. yeah. Loyalty, bro. All right. Um, well, uh, that's it for that segment. Uh, this next segment is called Ask Eric Thomas, and uh, it's brought to you by BreatheUniversity.com. Shout out to all our BU members, man. I always want to do that. Let me start with the people who already rocking with us, man. Yeah. We appreciate you guys. You guys are our Loyal. main your fam. Loyal. Y'all consistent, and I love it, man. Uh, another great call. Um, man, last what, last night, last week, um, another great call coming up this Thursday. Man, if y'all want to cook with us, if y'all want to be in the kitchen with us, going in, ask questions, stop just listening to us on the podcast, man. Join us at breatheuniversity.com, all right? Um, it is the the world's best online personal development tool uh, in, in the history of the world. It's like LeBron James of personal <laughs> development tools, you know what I mean? So come over and rock with us. <laughs> I, breathe. Carl, I, I appreciate Carl always laughing at my jokes. Oh, no, I I'm, doing, I'm doing this for Carl. I'm in this for Carl. As long as I hear Carl come through with that laugh, I'm good. Uh, so come join us at Breathe. And Carl's got to stop. You gotta stop, bro. I'm telling you. You gotta just man and just quit, bro. Even LeBron thing, you gotta stop it when you start talking about it. You just gotta stop it, Carl. Hey, Carl is on the fence, but shout out to uh, Josh, who is converted. He's full oh, you got Josh? Uh, fledged. Team LBJ. The only one I'm still working to recruit is Jamal because he's from Chicago. Oh, yeah. So That's he gonna refuses be tough. to let up. Uh, but I'm breaking him as well. By the next time y'all hear Jamal on the podcast, he will be converted. <laughs> Maul sent me a text uh, after the uh, game, at the Indiana game. Maul sent uh, me and Josh a text and said, okay, I'm finally ready to admit he's second best. I said, man, <laughs> get out of here. Uh, um, but back to Breathe You, man. BreatheUniversity.com. Come check us out. Come rock with us. Uh, we would love to see you over there. Jump on the calls with us. Over 451 modules, online trainings, mastermind wow. calls. Man, wow. take your life and yourself to the next level. Sign up. 
Uh, sign up with your spouse, sign up with a friend, and uh, come join us, man. Meetups going on all the time. Shout out to our New York crew, uh, Regina, for oh, all the work man. they do out there. With some they had another meetup meet this some... weekend, this last weekend. Oh, they're going in. Yeah, oh. trust me. Um, in Atlanta meetups, uh, L.A., uh, it's just been incredible to watch the uh, the synergy, man. So join join a, a strong team, breatheuniversity.com. All right, fellas, my name is Jermaine, and I'm a faithful listener and viewer from Detroit, Michigan. I've always enjoyed ET, but the podcast is my favorite thing you guys do. All right, bump your little TGIM. We out here. We didn't crawl out here. My Ask ET question is, where would you be today had you never met Carl and CJ? Uh, uh, homeless. No, Haven't you been listening? <laughs> high, I've school been blessed. high school dropout. <laughs> On the 13th blessed. year, y'all. The 13th year right now. Uh, I'm talking about where I met E. That's when he was eating them Raymond noodles. You know what I'm saying? Look at it. Now you're a bougie vegan. You know what I'm saying? I done turned him into a vegan. Uh, uh, I've been blessed to be successful in my corporate career, but as an entrepreneur, I've struggled to build a team without money. It's something that keeps me up at night because I know I could go even farther with the right support. I've even struggled to find someone willing to mention, I'm sorry, willing to mentor me. Looking forward to hearing the answer. Godspeed, Jermaine. So, E, what you got for Jermaine? Where were you before you met Carl and CJ? But you misspelled Carl's name, so you can't get number one support of the podcast and you spell uh, Carl with C. Let's fix that. What does he want to know? See, you already answered the question. I was homeless high school dropout. <laughs> what's his real question? What does he really want to know? You know what's so know? funny, though? People really think when we met, you were homeless. <laughs> they like, oh, man, you found E when he was homeless. Hey, hey I, I just started doing your thing. I gave E his like, first bar of soap, y'all. <laughs> I know that's right. I'm like, <laughs> right, exactly. Irish. I'm like, uh, Irish he, Spring. He he had some Irish Spring. <laughs> when I met E, I walked into the brand new house he just had built like two weeks before that. So... Yeah, he wasn't. He wasn't as. Uh, we we yeah. still have not verified. I want to verify. Sometime we're gonna get, have to get Diddy on the podcast, and I want to verify this forty miles to school one way walking stories that you give us <laughs> on here. Call <laughs> Vanessa. You yeah. know her book coming out. It might be in her book. It oh. might be in her book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how I raised the hip hop preacher. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Um, you know what the name of the book is? See what? Shh, my mom. She's something special. The secret. Behind the secret to success. Mm, mm. I love yeah, it. Yeah, that's the so name. So it's of the about book. me. <laughs> <laughs> she shouldn't have. She shouldn't have. Ah, the right. truth she revealed. Did. Yeah, she did. She <laughs> really shouldn't have. That's awesome. I hope I get a royalty check off of that. <laughs> no, right. um, I guess he's saying uh, he's struggling to build a team because he doesn't have the money to build one. So what's your? Uh, I mean, you talked about that all the time. So you got to go back to twenty different podcasts, bro. You don't need money. You need a vision, not for yeah. yourself yeah. only, but you need a vision for the people that's rocking with you. Who wants to just work with you and blow you up and sit there on the bench watching you blow up? Nobody. You know what I'm saying? So Nobody. for real. Yeah, for real. Get a vision. And by that, we just mean other individuals have dreams and goals in some type of way. Your vision should include their dreams and goals. And if everybody blow up, then everybody's going to want to rock with you. But if all you have is money, to give them, for real, you already broke. Hmm. All right. Um, Nate in London says, this question is for all three of you guys. Love the podcast. Just wondering, what is the biggest misconception people have about you? Uh, that I'm a jerk? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> no, people, no, let me go first. People do, like, I, I, I know, most people probably know, but I am a gorilla. I do get, um, a, what, a little, a little uh, Aggressive. Perturbed. Aggressive. quicker than others. <laughs> Aggressive. Aggressive. Um, but, I, you know, I, I am... Uh, Stuck in his ways. <laughs> in his way. Maybe we should let E answer the question. Right, well, I'll let E give my <laughs> E go for it. He said Carl. misconception, not, not confirmation. Hey, hey, Carl, I'm, uh -huh. not, I'm not doing it. I'm going with Chris. Is Chris the little thing. The assessment. Hey, yeah. let's go. Okay, so then let's do that. That might be better. What's the biggest misconception about each other? Mm. So we don't have to answer it ourselves. I think the biggest misconception about Carl is that um, he's laid back, which he is in some aspects. But I've seen Carl really dig in and um, really fight for, you know, his position, not only in the company, but I think just his position in life uh, has been, you know, really, you know, it's been great to watch his growth and development because, he was super passive and super indecisive at times, and I think 
He recognized that as a mm -hmm. weakness. And while I don't think he'll ever be a true gorilla, I think he's embraced, you know, some of those um, some of those weaknesses and really tried to just, you know, beef up his overall uh, uh, gorilla. Maybe some of that's from being around me. Oh, I was just going to say, you and Kendall. On him a little bit. Uh, you said me and who? Kendall. Oh, no doubt. Oh, Kendall for sure. Oh, Kendall's Kendall. Oh, man. Um, but yeah, no, Carl, Carl got some bite in him. He just don't show it often, so. Uh, yeah, All right, so the misconception about C, because somebody hit me on the, um, mm -hmm. uh, somebody hit me on Facebook and was like, yo, E, I would like for you to talk about this, but I know C controls <laughs> the podcast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love it. So the misconception is it's control without balance or it's control without direction. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. and somebody has to take... Any, anytime you do anything and it's great, somebody has to be able to make decisions and pull the trigger. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to have that person. You can't have people who are afraid to pull the trigger, who are afraid to make decisions. So yeah, C might be like, oh, boom, boom, boom. But it, it has a function. It has a purpose. And there are times when if somebody else has it, he's not going to be like, uh-uh, sit down. We can't right. do that. It's just more... Yo, if y'all don't know what we're doing, <laughs> I have a direction for where we're going. A go. clear plan. You know what I'm saying? I have a very clear direction of where we're going. And go. if you do have a plan, <laughs> my plan's better anyway. <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, right. don't laugh, y'all. The biggest misconception about E, and I'm going unanswered the question. Mm. The biggest misconception about E is he does not sleep. That is a flat right. out lie. Let me tell y'all something. If E sit down for more than 37 seconds, it's a wrap. It's well, a wrap. We, we call it, we refer to it as a homeless the nap. The homeless nap is real. That's the one part of homelessness because you know, that he is homeless, not left. It was like the dump trucks going by and all kind of cranes moving and stuff. He's in the abandoned building and he just could sleep so peaceful. So we could be in like a room. It could be a thousand people in there. Everybody chilling. There's music going on, everything. You look over, he just taking a little Knocked homeless boy. out. Just a little homeless one. He can get a four minute nap and be fully And get energized. fully recharged. Yep, that is the fact. So yeah, that's the biggest misconception I'm about E. The other sleep. misconception about E is that he's serious. He <laughs> oh, plays no, not at just all. as much as I uh, do. If not more. And oh, if y'all no were to ever get a chance to go oh, out to dinner with us, it's all I question. promise you, he would be um, now I am uh, the, the, the comic the relief leader. on the podcast. The ring leader. But the when ring we're leader. out in public, he is no, loose. No, don't wow. say that, C. Loose. Don't say when we're out to public. Say when I'm with C and I'm out to public. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, there's no other time that I go, there's no other time that I am pushed that way into that direction. Most of the other time, I'm serious. Hey, when I'm with but, but you just He's established right. either. C has a better direction of it, so you just absolutely. established that. I'm so. joking. <laughs> absolutely. Carl, no, if it's me, Carl, Tamisha, and Didi, I'm just walking around enjoying myself. I'm kind of laid back. He'll, he'll, yeah, he'll have some loose moments, but he won't be on yeah. full blast. No, uh, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing you. it out of you. Yeah, <laughs> just like Carl. I got Carl eating uh, 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 steaks <laughs> on the road, I got E clowning. I, I am uh, on the other side of the shoulder telling them what to do. Uh, <laughs> hey, man, uh, real quick, uh, Boston, May 20th. Shout out yeah. to Boston. We're coming there on May 20th. Take control, myself, E.T., Carl, Josh, Jamal, Maya. It's going down. Everybody's going to be there. Whole gang's there. It is going to be amazing. Um, also... It's, it's, it, but it's, it's D.D. and Candace... Are they are they coming back out? Uh, I just want to know. Candace will not be there. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I can guarantee you that. Um, and Didi will be there, but not there, if that makes sense. Right. Oh, perfect <laughs> sense. Perfect sense. She will be somewhere with an insider close. Right. Um, and then also St. Louis. Carl, give me the St. Louis date real June quick. June 24th. Yep, June, June 24th. June 24th will be yep. in St. Louis. So excited about that. Also, man, I want to take um, uh, uh, the time to say a, uh, a happiest of birthdays to my lovely wife, Candace, hey. who will be 31 uh, May 2nd. So that yes, is, sir. depending on when you're listening to this, a couple days ago, but it's tomorrow in our real life. Um, so I just want to say I love you. Why am I even doing this? She doesn't listen to the podcast. <laughs> I'm trying to show y'all what a great husband I am. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to show the people that I care about my wife. But no, seriously, shout out to her, man. It's her birthday. 
Um, we did Any, Beyonce two years ago. I was just going to ask you, what's the plans year. this year? Because you'd be sitting at Bar High, Tamisha birthday a week after. You'd be killing me. Uh, my, mother, going, hey, my mother's the day after. Yeah, we're going to Wakanda, guys. Uh, oh, oh, beautiful. <laughs> oh, beautiful. All I got. Beautiful. No we're going to Wakanda. Me. Yeah, there's no so better trip. So I will be back for, in time for the Boston Conference <laughs> to try to top Beyonce tickets in the helicopter ride. We're going to Wakanda. There it is. And, uh, yeah, no, I love you, dear. Uh, man, and I, you know what? I just thought about this the other day. In August, it would be nine years that we're married. Yes, sir. Nine. Wow. I'm like, Lord have mercy. So uh, shout out to my wife on her birthday. Just wanted to do that. Um, any other announcements before we get to the nugget of the day? Phenomenal Life Jamaica. Oh. Yeah, can't forget uh, can that. Can we get some island music, Will? Can we, can, uh, there we go. Yeah, no, yeah, that's. Uh, I, I'm excited about that. I love that, man, because it's something to look forward to yes, already. Sir. It's not till February, but I'm excited, man, because it's going to be a blast. We had such a blast last time. Look forward to you joining us in Jamaica. All right, we're not going on a cruise this time. We're flying straight to the mainland and um, ready to get it in. Beautiful resort. Beautiful resort. Uh, just an incredible experience. Uh, e, let me tell you something. If you sign up now, E is going what you to get? give you his insight. What you get? <laughs> you, you too will have an insight. Okay? Hey, you know my inside is bougie though, man. They only want to look out for other people. Uh, I got to work with them on that. I I'm trying to, to, I'm trying to sell that. tickets here, E. Would you? Oh, okay. All right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. You will have an insight. I just want to be honest. <laughs> okay. What, who will your insider look out? Is it, are they trying? It's like a like a uh, like a one of them secret uh, society. Yeah, yeah. Oh, is it here we go. Fun? How much money do you have to make to get an insider? I, don't I just want to know. know how far I am off the go. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm getting over because of the videos. Like, they say the videos have helped them, so that's how I'm getting over. I don't well, I ain't got no videos, so do I we get no cash-wise. You know what I'm saying? What I'm looking like. <laughs> you, know, you have to convince them that you did the video. Nah, uh, there it is. So I should have one, then, e. Do yeah, I get right. some oh, credibility here? definitely should yeah. have one. Yeah, you should say that. I don't think you ever say it. So okay, they never there make it the is. connection. Hey, for all the insiders out there, I'm opening up the spot right now. First come, first serve. Oh, yeah, no doubt. And Carl, I'm about to get an uh, insider uh, very soon, and everybody will be very proud of me because my insider, I'm actually going to have my insider on the road with me full time. Mm, so they wow. will, when you see me out, just know that I blew up when you see me with an yes, insider. Sir. Also, hey, real quick, shout out to our, um, our, our Instagram page. We have 915 oh, yeah. followers. Whoop, whoop. The Instagram is S2S Podcast. S2S Podcast. Um, right now, we have a video of the podcast, a, a very uh, awe-inspiring pictures of Eric and myself. Also, a family photo, a throwback Thursday photo of myself, my lovely wife, Candice, Avery, and Trey, if you want to see uh, oh, my yeah. beautiful family go there. And then yeah. also this shot, I don't know if y'all saw it, but this shot, I'm going remember, there we, now. Took that, remember, no remember we took that picture with all three of uh, us in the same rat. shirt? Oh. Nordstrom's Rack. Nordstrom Rack. Houston <laughs> the plaid Houston. joint. But, yeah, the yeah. plaid joint. All three of us in the plaid and by joint. Buy the butter cake. And, 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 I forget. Buy the butter cake. He looking, <laughs> and go look at the picture. He looking like he just ate a butter cake because the last butter button. Cake. The last button on each shirt is looking like it's on life support. Uh, your last button need an insider. It's just to go and close that up. So, <laughs> Oh. Um, yeah, all right. Well, I got to go. We got actual work to do. It's been fun. I love y'all. E, give us a nugget of day so we can go home. Yeah, I said it earlier, man. I, and I want you guys to really, for real, think it through, you know, count the cost. You know what I'm saying? But before you, um, you know, before you lose, lose what you got, chasing what you want, you know, I really think that through, you know, because sometimes when you get to where you're going, whatever you're chasing, you get there and find out it's not, more valuable than what you had. In most cases, you can't go back. So I just say count the cost, man. You know, and, and, and everybody's always thinking that, you know, that, that next move is the best move. Or if they make more money, or if they live in a bigger house, or if they had a different spouse, or if they had a different job, or different... I'm going to be real with you. I, I truly believe it's not always about different. It's about you. And in some cases, you're going to be there when you get there, so it's nothing, it's not gonna be better because you got because you there. You know, so just just for real, man, be cautious. And for each one of us, at some point when we were together, we had other opportunities to go go our separate ways. 
You know, other we could have said, oh, I take this deal or I take this deal or I take this deal. But I believe in the back of our mind, we knew, you know, what we got is special. You know, it may not be perfect, but what we got is special. You know, and if we work it, then our grass is going to be as green as the grass on the other side. You know what I'm saying? But we got to water it. We got to cut it. We got to edge it. You know, we got to fertilize it. We got to take we got to take care of it. So I'm saying before you go looking on the to somebody else's grass and be willing to give up what you have for what you think you want. For real, count that cost, man. Count that cost and make sure it's worth losing what you have. So it's your boy E.T. saying be content, you know, in whatever state you find yourself, be content. Don't think don't think more is better or bigger is better. Sometimes what you have is, is good and you you can take care of it to the point where you can make it great, all right? So make the rest of your life the best of your life. Appreciate that negative day. Love you, fellas. Go leave us that review on iTunes. We'll see you next week. I want you to focus on here right now. Don't you worry about when you get home. You make this, you concentrate on this opportunity. You don't worry about tomorrow. You concentrate on this opportunity.